This step guide explains how you can use custom accessibility actions to make your apps more accessible. An accessibility action allows you to add some information to a view that lets an accessibility service perform an action on behalf of the user. At its heart, an accessibility action consists of two things, a label and a block of code that corresponds to that label. That's it. An accessibility service like TalkBack or Switch Access then finds a standardized way to surface that action to the end user. In an earlier dev byte in the series, we talked about the Android accessibility model. Let's recap that. An app typically presents content to a user who interacts with that app by performing actions like clicking, long pressing, etc. Users with accessibility needs benefit from having that information presented in multiple ways. They also benefit from having multiple ways to interact with your app. And accessibility services provide alternate ways to present information to users, and it lets them interact with your app in ways that make the most sense to their users. For most situations, if you use standard built-in components, the Android framework will take care of interacting with the accessibility services for you. Some actions are built into the widgets and views that you're familiar with. So for example, when a TalkBack user focuses on a button, TalkBack will tell that user how to perform a click. It'll say, double tap to activate. And how to long press, double tap and hold for long press. And if the user picks one of those options, TalkBack will perform the correct gesture on behalf of the user. Other accessibility services will present these familiar actions in different ways that make sense to their end users. In this step byte, we'll focus on how you can implement logic related to custom actions. Basically, ways in which users can interact with your apps beyond simply clicking and long pressing. For example, they could swipe on an item drag an item up or down a list, pinch to zoom an image, etc. These are pretty common ways in which users interact with apps. And you'll learn how to use custom accessibility actions to make these types of interactions work for users with disabilities who may be using an accessibility service. Okay, let's make all of this concrete and look at an example from the Tasks Tracker app that we've been using in these step bytes. It has a bunch of features that are commonly found in many app. Let's focus on one feature in particular, where users can swipe to archive a task. Now, what about users who cannot actually perform the swipe gesture? How do they get to archive a task? Think of the TalkBack user who cannot see the screen and relies on spoken feedback to use your app. This is what a TalkBack user hears when they focus on a task on the task screen. Notice that there's nothing there but how to archive a task. Or consider the switch access user who may not be able to touch the screen at all and may be relying on a couple of switches to interact with the device, with one switch being used to discover the interactive items on the screen and the other switch to interact with an item. This is what a switch access user experiences when they focus on a task. Again, there's no way for the end user to archive a task. This is where custom accessibility actions come in. You specify a label, then associate that label with some code that you're probably already implemented, and accessibility services like TalkBack and Switch Access will find a way to surface that functionality to the end user. Okay, let's improve that swipe to archive feature a little bit. You've already implemented this feature, and when a user performs a swipe gesture, you already run some code that archives a task. To make this functionality available to users of accessibility services, you use viewcompat's add accessibility action method, and you provide the following. The view to which the custom accessibility action is attached, the action label, and the code to execute. That's it. All you have to do now is to call add accessibility action and connect a label, say, archive, and link that label to the code you already wrote for archiving a task. And that's it. Okay, so how does this work for a TalkBack user? TalkBack announces content about the task as before, but this time it informs the user that there are actions associated with this task. And when the user opens the actions menu, the archive label is announced to that user. 
And when the user chooses that action, the task is archived. And how does this work for a switch access user? Let's find out. As before, the user can navigate to each interactive element on the screen. However, this time, they are also presented with an Actions menu, and the Archive option is presented to them. And when the user chooses that action, the task is archived. Note that for actions to work in Switch Access, the Auto Select option must be turned off. If it is turned on, the Actions menu will not be displayed. Instead, clicking on the focused item will automatically select that item and perform the equivalent of the click gesture. OK, to summarize, you can implement custom accessibility actions using the Android X View Compat library. An accessibility action allows accessibility services to perform an action on behalf of the user. An accessibility action consists of two things, a label and a block of code that corresponds to that label. You can implement custom accessibility actions to make your apps more accessible to users of accessibility services. Thank you for listening.